Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today I'm going to be taking you on a bookshelf tour. I've been pretty much stuck at home for several days, like most people, so I decided to take the opportunity to reorganize my shelf. I would say that it was because I didn't have anything else to do, but that would be sort of a lie because the rest of my room is a wreck and I have a lot of books to read. Um, but this seemed like more fun, so this is what I did. I don't have as much bookshelf room as I would like, um, so the books aren't perfect and I'm not really sure about all of the knickknacks exactly where they're supposed to go, um, but this is what I have at the current moment. We're going to start out with the general fiction shelf. Um, the lighting in here isn't the best, so I may have to improvise a little bit. Hopefully that's fine. It's not like I have a bunch of money for lighting equipment or anything. Um, so if you'll notice with these stacks, we have some that are horizontal, some that are vertical. The ones that are laying flat like this are books that I have not read yet. Um, books that are upright, actually with the exception of that stack and maybe a couple others, uh, most of the ones that are upright are ones I've already read. But the ones that I have not read, which would be this whole section, they are roughly in order of to be read priority. Um, so this section is obviously sci-fi fantasy. So we have Ursula Le Guin way up here on top. That's hopefully going to be the next one that I read. And then random book that I bought that I'm not too sure about on the bottom. Um, and then with these, I'm not really, I don't have a very strong opinion about it when I read kind of any of them. The Star Trek novel is probably one that I'm not going to get to for a while, but that's just because I've got a lot of feelings because of my granddad who really likes Star Trek, so hopefully I can read that one sooner rather than later, but we'll see. We have Mr. Dragon Boy, who was also my granddad's, and then we move on to um, stuff that I have already read that's sci-fi fantasy, which is very small and sad looking. Um, there's only three here. The Host by Stephanie Mayer, um, some H.G. Wells, and then The Wicked Book. After that, we have this middle stack of, like, horror vampire novels. I have not read any of these, although I'm really looking forward to reading the Gilda stories soon. The other ones I'm honestly not too sure about. I was into vampire novels maybe around the time Twilight was out, which has been a hot minute. So those are just ones that I kind of still have. Um, you would think that I should unhaul some things and I actually have unhauled a lot but I'm really bad at getting rid of stuff. Um, so the lone vampire novel that I've read is the parody of Twilight and then we have thrillers next. Um, these are ones that I have read and then this massive stack is the ones that I have not quite read yet. We're going to get a little bit of help with lighting so y'all can actually see this. My room light is not always ideal. So we have a massive amount of Stephen King. Um, you know, honestly, probably half or more of these belong to my dad and should probably be on his bookshelf, but that's fine. Um, these two, even though they're upright, I have not read them. They just kind of got stuck there because that's where they fit. And we have thriller detective -y novels that I haven't read that aren't Stephen King. <laughs> Um, the one that I have in priority for this list is Universal Harvester by John Darnielle. I read Wolf in a White Van several years ago and I really, really liked it. So I've been excited to read this. I just have not quite yet. Next, we have this small section of romance. I'm not really big into romance, but I also haven't really read romance. So I don't know if I really get to say that. Um, I kind of started to read Under My Skin and stopped. It was very focused around, like, the office and that sort of thing. Um, and that, honestly, I just, I couldn't sit and listen to people talk about that. It's supposed to be a story about somebody figuring out their gender, which is cool. And I want to power through it at some point, but right now is just not the time. After that, we have some E.L. James garbage, but I don't want to make anybody mad. Um, I own Fifty Shades and Grey, and I mostly went to look at them just to see what they were like what people said about them. I actually did read Fifty Shades, which you can see here. I got it at McKay's, um, a used bookstore. And you can see the gratuitous amount of post-it notes. I definitely read it with intent. Um, so repetitive, creepy questions, um, unnecessary interjections, 
Uh, I just generally tabbed all of the bad stuff, except for um, the pink ones are where they actually did some good things. But regardless, um, it's pretty, pretty jammed up with colors that aren't pink, with a couple of exceptions there, maybe like four or five. Um, I'm not going to turn this into a Fifty Shades of Grey video. But I did want to compare it to Grey, um, see what his perspective is, though I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit frightened because I don't know if I want to be in his head. But the other ones, um, I'm honestly not sure about all of them. Uh, I figured reading a Nicholas Sparks novel would probably be good, and I heard a lot of hype for Water for Elephants. Um, but yeah, that's the very small amount of adult romance that I have. Next we have um, historical fiction, which this is the stack of stuff that I have not read. The stuff that we have towards the top, The House of Impossible Beauties, which is based on um, uh, the 80s drag culture and actually focuses on a specific house. Um, so I'm excited for that. Um, Revolutionary is another LGBT pick and it talks about um, a figure in the Revolutionary War. It's actually written by a relative of that person and kind of writes them as a trans character. Um, historically, the way that it's told a lot of the times, she was a woman who dressed up as a man to be in the war. Um, but uh, if you, you can listen to this author do various interviews where he talks about why it was appropriate, he thought, to include kind of this historical figure as a trans person. It's really interesting. Um, and then up after that, we have Tana Hasi Coates, The Water Dancer, which I started. And then life just got in the way. Uh, it's really fantastic so far. I just need to find a good time to go back to it. Then we have the very small amount of historical adult fiction that I've read, um, or at least that I own that I've read. That's The Book Thief, which is one of my absolute favorites. And then we have my mug there. Um, and then going into this, we have kind of older literature. So I think anything like 1960s and before, I kind of put it in this category. Um, so we have a decent stack here. The Well of Loneliness is the next one that I would like to read. It's kind of a lesbian classic. And you can see a uh, picture for Dorian Gray, member of the wedding. So kind of more queer literature and then um, on to some other classics. Next we have some that I have read. A lot of these I read for school. Actually, I want to say all of these except for Animal Farm, Phantom of the Opera, and Gulliver's Travels and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea I read for a class. But I was an English major, so most of these were actually from college. And above all of these, we have my Holden Caulfield hat, um, which is just going to follow Catcher in the Rye wherever it goes if I do end up moving it. And next we have the stuff that I haven't read that is more kind of general or contemporary fiction. Um, this tall stack is unread, but so is the kind of, so are the few that are over here. Um, so the one that I have that I would like to read next is Nevada by Imogene Binney, um, which is a trans novel. And then um, Freshwater by Akweke Emisi, I'm super excited for. The other ones I don't really have plans for so far as timeline goes. But um, we had to get a little bit weird and put the ones that I have read below it on the shelf. So starting with Faces at the Bottom of the Well, um, kind of on down, these are ones that I've read. Most of these I actually, again, did read for a class, but again, I was an English major, so that entailed reading a lot of fiction for class. The only exception to that is Dream Boy, which was interesting. I'm still not sure if I like it or not. It's uh, a novel that was written in like the 90s. It's a gay novel and there's a lot of weird death imagery and some stuff that happens at the end that was just a little bit weird, but it was neat. Um, and some of these books I've reread, like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and The Color Purple, I've reread since I actually had to read them. Um, but on from there, the other side is going to be our YA um, that I have read. So start with Speak. Um, M.T. Anderson. I have really enjoyed it. It's been a while since I've read this. I actually, I think I read Feed for a class, but I also picked up um, Octavian Nothing, which is with the series. 
but the stuff that M.T. Anderson does with language is absolutely stunning. Um, and then we have some older stuff. Kiss by an Angel is one that I've had since high school. Perks is a classic. And I Wish You All the Best is more recent. And one down by John Green. Um, I'm sure that I have some Nerdfighter adjacent knickknacks I should probably put over here. Um, and then on down to the other Marcus Duzak, which I contemplated switching this around, but with the way that things were on the bookshelves, I just kind of left it as is. On down to the bottom, we have a young adult that I have yet to read. This is actually a little bit backwards because Carry On is actually the one I want to read next. Um, so that kind of goes the opposite way, which I will fix. But and then we have the rest of the stack um, kind of on down. Next, we have picture books. Um, I think I've read all of them except for Stories for Boys Who Dare to Be Different. And then we have some kid lit. This is the stack that I have yet to read. Alani in the Distant Sea seems really cute. It's uh, based off of Filipino folklore. Um, but then we have Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. And I loved Secret of Nim, so I need to <laughs> read the novel even if it was a favorite as a kid. Um, and then we have more along down. These are the ones that I have read. Some of these are more recent. Some of these are not so recent. Um, I would say a good chunk of these are ones that I had as a kid. Um, some of them obviously aren't. George uh, is too new for me to have had it as a kid. Um, but because of Winn-Dixie, The Outsiders, Call of the Wild, I was obsessed with as a little kid. Horse and Pony Stories, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, Black Beauty. Maniac McGee was actually one of the books that I really ended up enjoying. It's kind of one of the one of the things that instilled um, kind of love for literature from me. Fun fact about this Goosebumps book, this is actually a library book and it is not the same as most of the library books that I have because most of those I purchased. I actually checked this out from the library when I was like seven and the person who took me there did not take me back. Um, so I still own it. So that's fun. The other ones I have read either for class, such as Up the Road Slowly, which I really considered unhauling because it was a very slow road to read. Gathering Blue I read because I really liked The Giver, and I don't know where my copy of The Giver is, which makes me kind of upset. So I'm going to have to go on the hunt for that. Um, the Little Prince, I actually, I'm a liar, this was one that I read. And I was in like 7th grade, but I've read it several times since then. Um, we'll actually see another copy of this a little bit later. Now we have fiction shelf number 2. Um, which, it's maybe a little bit hard to see all of it because we've got kind of a strange angle with this other bookshelf here. But we start with Harry Potter. I have so many different Harry Potter knickknacks, and this isn't even all of them. Um... This obviously is not Harry Potter related. These are just several old books that I've accumulated. Uh, there's a book on Soviet Russia that was written by an American. I thought that would be neat to go through, even though I haven't yet. The other book is Music Theory, which I was into in high school and was very bad at, which is why I don't really do it anymore so much. Um, and then a neat copy of the History of the Peloponnesian War. Then we have actual copies of Harry Potter that have not been opened yet. And then we have some more items over here. That case of cards, I have not actually used any of them, but I've had it since, like, elementary school. Then we have some Harry Potter mugs and owls. Next, we have the shelf with actual Harry Potter books. Um, we'll start on this side because I have some explanations for the end. Um, that's actually not Harry Potter. That's folklore. Um, then we can move on to, uh, we've got coloring books, Harry Potter, or versions of Harry Potter that I've read previously, um, kind of hardbacks that have cl clearly seen better days, but I've read these books a lot. So we also have the new, and then little Harry Potter figurines, my son, Sirius Black, um, and we've got a wand back there. Oh no, somebody fell. There we go. Next we have uh, the Fantastic Beast books, which I have not read. I've seen the first movie, um, but I haven't really looked at it. Uh, then there's actual Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which I have read. Next, we have books about Harry Potter. Now, this one I have read cover to cover a few times. Granted, it's been at least a decade, um, but I really enjoyed this. They kind of go into where she got um, inspiration from, mythology-wise. 
Similarly, this one is like that. I've also read this one from cover to cover. This lexicon I haven't, but I've like looked through. Uh, Harry Potter cookbook's kind of a novelty, but I hope to use it at some point and modify the recipes because I can't have probably some of the things that they calls for, but that's fine. Next we have notebooks, uh, pictures from Harry Potter world because my stepmom likes making stuff like this. We have some DVDs because I didn't know where else to put them. And then we have this, which is probably the nerdiest thing on the shelf, which is maybe saying something considering. This is actually a dissertation that I found while doing other research that was kind of tangentially related. Um, and I liked it enough that I printed it off. Granted, it's been about five years since I found it, but it's looking at fan fiction as an actual means for like criticizing literature. And I actually went through and read some of the fics that they focus on. And they're not really my cup of tea, the actual fan fictions that they decided to focus, uh, because they centered Snape and that's not really my bag. Um, but it's super interesting. I am very interested in kind of the social implications um, of why people kind of write the sort of fan fiction that they do. Um, but anyways, we'll move on to the graphic novel and manga shelf. These are the ones that I have read. So start out with Pashmina, which is a cute, like middle grade fantasy. Moving on, we have Kase San and Morning Glories faced out because they're adorable. And also I had a little bit of extra space. Wandering Sun, Blankets, and on a Sunbeam. Then we have the stack that I have not yet read. Obviously, some of these are sequels. The one that I am wanting to read um, kind of most immediately is The Midwinter Witch, which is the third installment of Witch Boy. Next, we have The Deep and Dark Blue, which is one that I kind of just bought on a whim, but it looks so good. It's kind of dystopian, um, and one of the characters is sort of figuring out their gender throughout it. It's another middle grade, um, but it looks really great. Next, we have plays that I have not read. Um, Diary of Anne Frank. Um, the Normal Heart. The Normal Heart is actually probably the one that I'm going to prioritize. In the next shelf, uh, starts out with plays that I have read, which this is not all of the plays that I have read, um, but they're the ones that I have. Um, and next to Hamlet, of course, is Dear Yorick. And then we have poetry. It's poetry that I have read. Um, and then we have poetry that I've been meaning to read. And this one is one that was a little bit hard to prioritize because in April I plan to read a whole lot. Um, so the one at the very top, uh, where the words don't fit in my mouth, that's one that I'm planning on reading this month. But the rest of them, or not the rest of them, but at least this good chunk of, uh, first ones I do plan on reading next month or would like to read next month. There are just a lot of good things in the stack. Andrea Gibson is, like, one of my favorite people. Um, I've been wanting to read Seifo for a good while. Dinesh Smith is just fantastic. Uh, there's definitely a lot of good potential throughout here. Um, and then the ones towards the bottom are like anthologies that I don't really know what I'll get to. The next shelf, we're starting off with some series. So we have, um, the Dark Crystal series, which I have yet to read, but I'm super excited to read. I, um, read some of the graphic novels recently. And I'm wanting to kind of catch up on this show, but uh, I'd really like to read those. We have the whole Lord of the Rings series is there. I've only read The Hobbit, and then the first one, um, I'll get around to it eventually. I really like the movies in, like, middle school, so we'll see if I get the um, motivation to read them. Um, uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, I have not read. The Hunger Games trilogy, I have read multiple times. Um... Dark Secrets was one from high school. Octavian Nothing is the one that I mentioned earlier that has really interesting stuff going on with um, language. Feed has, I think, more language as a kind of a plot point. Feed focuses on technology, um, and throughout it, there's a breakdown of language. But with Octavian Nothing, um, it's just that he kind of moves perspectives. You get um, Octavian's perspective, which is written in a very different way than some of the letters that you see kind of between the revolutionary soldiers and their family. It's good stuff. Um, and we have Miss, Car Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Mm. And we have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which I've read the first one of and I absolutely loved it. I just haven't gotten around to reading the rest. The Uglies, which I actually have all of them, 
somewhere, which it, it's a little concerning that I don't know where the others are, but I think I've read all of those. Land of Stories I have not gotten to, but I bought them because Chris Colfer, I was very big into Glee. Um, so I was supporting somebody that I liked. This next series I loved as a kid, Guardians of Gahul. And then we have um, the vampire series that I liked. Twilight, of course, classic. Um, and then the Marked series. Um, moving on, we have anthologies. And then we have the first books or individual books of series that I don't have all of. Um, I don't think that I have actually finished any of these, so I should probably get on that. Okay, and if you take note of any mess, you'll just have to kind of ignore that. I have some boxes places. Um, but this is kind of the small shelf that I have. Starting off, we have kind of like fancy volumes of things. I do have two copies of Sherlock Holmes. I got this at, well, Goodwill, clearly. Um, and then I ended up getting this one that's nice for a gift. So I was going to kind of use this one for annotations um, and didn't know where else to put it. Shakespeare, Edgar Allan Poe, I've had this since like middle school. Um, poetry, some Doctor Who. This, I said that I had another copy of The Little Prince. This has a bunch of really cool stuff on the making of it. I mentioned that I liked The Book Thief. This is actually a signed copy that I found at the bookstore. And then we have the anniversary edition of Looking for Alaska and All of Narnia. Next, so with these shelves, there's kind of a collection of things going on. We have random Guinness Book of World Records that I had when I was little. Music. We have textbooks that are just about kind of various things. We've got first aid, we've got psychology, social work. And we have books on writing. And yes, my name books are with my writing books because that's what I use them for, um, even though I haven't really in a while. These are just like style guides. Um, and then we have various anthologies, books on writing, um, writing prompts, and things like that. In the next shelf, which may need some assistance because the lighting in here is trash, the next shelf we have just textbooks. They aren't all in an order that I really like. Excuse me, ma'am. Thank you. Um, this one is, I haven't read it, but I was given it. Uh, I should probably check it out. It's about family. Um, we have sexuality studies, stats, um, and then we have kind of some that are more specifically on writing kind of social science related things. So we've got using sources um, and then onto research design books, asking questions, doing focus groups, and then we have intro texts for sociology and gender studies, theory textbooks, uh, specifically feminist theory, and then we have some that are uh, history. Then all of this leads us to the primary section where I have my nonfiction. Of course, we have knickknacks, some gay stuff. I have my thesis laying out here because it took me long enough. I might as well celebrate it. Um, I need to figure out what all knickknack wise I want to put up here because there's a lot of space. But starting off with this first section, we have kind of LGBT studies. Um, some of this is general, some of it is about language specifically, some isn't LGBT specific, but it's about language, so there we've got it. Um, this one, again, LGBT studies, but this focuses on more trans and gender related things. On to history, and then kind of history, but also kind of more political, and also there wasn't enough space on the history shelf, um, so it's got some friends to help it. Next we have kind of general women's and gender studies. Um, this kind of goes through more than just talking about gender, but that's where it fits, so that's where it's at. <laughs> Next we have kind of the intersection of gender and race and place during some of this. Um, this is the newest one that I have. I'm actually really excited to look at it. It's focused on Native American women and indigenous women. The next shelf, we have some women's history, um, kind of in this section. Some of it's like more artifactual almost. We've got a collection of zines and a collection of other magazine articles and then books on the body. Um, 
And then down here we have books on HIV and AIDS. Then we have kind of our shelf on race. Some are essay or essay adjacent. We do have a study here. Um, and then this is kind of an analysis um, from a journalist. And this is kind of one of the big texts on critical race theory. And on down to the next shelf, we've got a couple of books kind of on like anti-racism um, and then kind of on to more historical texts. On down to the next shelf, um, some of these are definitely historical. Um, a lot of these touch on history in one way or another, but they're also kind of more political, which is why I separated it the way that I did, even though, you know, the clearly none others could fit on there. Um, we've got some on voting, some on race and policy, a bit on segregation. Um, the ones kind of collected over here all have to do with prisons, and then these are kind of more general. And then on the next shelf, we have kind of some pieces that are looking more at class, um, some on climate, and then a couple of other kind of random ones. Um, I think these are both oriented around technology. I haven't actually read either of those yet. On our next shelf, uh, we have kind of general sociology books. We've got some journals, uh, some social stigma, some mills, some Foucault, that sort of thing. And then we have a book on the judicial system and a book on kind of talking politics wise. I honestly haven't read either of them, but I got them for free. So they're here. Um, then we have this guide to help us divide the next section, which is, um, kind of graphic nonfiction. A lot of these are memoirs to a certain extent. I think the only exception is this one, which is a collection of women's history, which I considered putting on the women's history shelf, but since it is kind of told in graphic novel form, we have it here. Um, the rest of the memoirs and so forth are separated by topic. But first we have LGBT memoirs, starting with this, which is really neat. I actually got to see um, these two authors speak. It's a children's book. It's actually two children's books if you flip it over. Um, one side is written by a son who is trans, and then the other one was written by his mom. Um, their story was really neat. And after that, we have Sorted by Jackson Bird. Um, and then we kind of go along. Uh, not all of these are memoirs, although the overwhelming majority of them are. Um, this one is more biography-ish. Um, this one is a collection of autobiographical memoir type stuff. Mm, but I think the rest of them are memoirs. Moving on, we have a section of memoirs by people of color. Black is the Body I considered putting in with some of the other things, but I honestly haven't read it yet to know exactly what it's like. And it says biography on the back of it, so I just kind of went with it. Um, we do have another kid's book in here, um, Through My Eyes by Ruby Bridges, who was one of the first people to be involved in desegregating in Louisiana, I believe. Um, it's a really touching story, and it's a, it's a good book, kind of straight from the person who lived history, if you're in the market for kid's books. We've got a lot of good ones. I by no means read all of these but I would very much like to. Oh, this is another kid's book. Um, I don't have a whole lot of those kind of in this section, which is kind of why I'm pointing them out. But also it was really good, even if you're not necessarily needing it for a child. Um, Turning 15 on the Road to Freedom was somebody who was a teenager during Bloody Sunday um, and then the Selma March. It was super good. So these are the memoirs that I have that kind of focus on race in some capacity. The next ones I have, it's a small kind of subsection, but they're World War II related. Um, Eli Wassell, um, 40 Autumns, which is the only one that I haven't read any of in this stack. I picked up The Ark at work because nobody else had picked it up and it looked like a good read. So we'll see how that goes. This next section that I have is, I guess, kind of the global section. Um, I think one or two of these might deal with immigration, but regardless, kind of looking at that global lens, we've got a couple of books that are on Iraq, which one of them I think I read part of for history class, but I really wanted to see a little bit more of it. We've got an autobiography that I found at a thrift shop from somebody who 
went through the Rwandan Holocaust. I thought that was interesting. Um, then we've got a whole lot of other ones. I also have several of Malala Yousafzai's books. I also have her dad's. Um, I have read the kind of adult or regular version of I Am Malala, and I really enjoyed it. I loved a lot of the context that they give you for the actual situation um, before kind of telling you about what all she did about it. But I've heard a lot of good things about the Young Readers version. I've heard that her voice is kind of more apparent in this one than in the other one. So I'm excited for that. Um, and then I also have her newer book, We Are Displaced, which I'm also excited to read. Okay, so I actually really quickly did a little bit of reorganizing because I figured out that something was in the wrong spot. Um, so these two are kind of, or these three really, I didn't exactly know where to put them. Um, but they're kind of in this category. Uh, this is an oral history. Um, listening is an act of love. We have good old Mr. Rogers. And then this book, um, Stiff, which is... I'm not really sure if this is even necessarily the right spot to put it in. I have yet to read it. Um, so maybe it's more general nonfiction. Um, but I think this person basically works at a morgue or something like that and writes about some of the lives of the bodies that she's dealing with. I don't super know. But the next section kind of starts out books that are about disability or mental health, um, that sort of thing. As I kind of go through these, just know that I haven't read all of them necessarily, and some of them um, kind of could stand a little bit of criticism. Um, but kind of moving on down, we have a little bit more kind of on disability, mental health, addiction, kind of within that realm of mental health. Then I have um, kind of some that focus on women, um, and that sort of thing. We have um, Jane Goodall. This is another kid's book. I actually used this for um, kind of a tutoring class thing that I was doing. And it's a good, simple biography. It's National Geographic. Um, and then from here, we have general kind of older biographies and autobiographies and the like. Um, then we have some various historical, nonfiction-ish things. Um... And then kind of just other books that are about other various nonfiction related things. So, Psychology of Serial Killers, The Coming Plague, maybe I should take a look at that. Um, yeah. And then this, uh, the Yorkshire Terrier book is a remnant of my childhood. I was obsessed with different dog breeds, so we still have that here. So that was my memoir shelf, but there's actually a little bit more. Um, we kind of have this area, or I don't really have a whole lot. I have GRE prep books that I'm terrified of, um, a lot of magazines and yearbooks. Um, and then we actually have kind of philosophy, self-help kind of combination. And again, the lighting in my room is atrocious, so we'll need some help. Um, so starting off, we have some philosophy, most of the philosophy books I got for class, but, um, some of the David Henry Thoreau I got myself. We've got some religious texts, and then we have a lot of books kind of on Christianity. So after this first Bible, we have a few texts that are either about figures or people who are doing something kind of with religion in mind, or um, as the case with The Color of Compromise, is about the church kind of generally. And then from there, we have theology books. And then this stack is kind of a mix of devotional and uh, some actually looking at biblical texts and stuff like that. Um, then we have a journal. Next we have self-help section. Uh, we start out with some workbooks. I certainly can't speak for all of these. I'm really unsure about this one. Somebody gave this to me and there is some stuff in it that made me... I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually be looking into it, but um, there are some that are pretty good, some that are just on general mindfulness learning, some that are LGBT specific. I did want to shout this one out specifically, um, Dara Hoffman Fox. Um, I've talked about this book, You and Your Gender Identity, before, but this was super helpful. It's the first workbook like this that I've actually completed, first of all, um, but it was really insightful. So if you are interested in gender or questioning your gender, um, I recommend. Then we have general self-help, um, some Brene Brown, I haven't necessarily read that yet. My Enneagram books, I really love those. Um, I haven't read all of The Wisdom of the Enneagram, but the idea of the Enneagram has been very helpful to me. 
this book I have probably should look more into, to be honest. Um, and then we have lots of chicken soup for the soul. And I probably actually have read most of these. Um, when I was in like middle school, high school, I was really into them. Um, I honestly haven't picked one up in a long time, but I have them. And then we have, um, don't forget to be awesome. We have gay cats. I do also technically have this little area that doesn't necessarily count as a bookshelf and it's less organized than the others. Um, but we do have some knickknacks and Coke bottles that we can ignore. Um, but we've actually got some magazines here. I've got some National Geographic um, and a couple of others as well as coloring books. We've got a general kind of Rose Art one and Supernatural. We've got some more friends, um, some Hamilton shot glasses, Doctor Who lunchbox, Doctor Who Legos, and um, notebook, lots of other little things, um, postcards that I need to do something better with. The other shelves that are in this office corner are even more unorganized, but to give you guys, I guess, an idea of more of the stuff that I have, um, these clear boxes, we've got four of them, I believe, unless there's another one sitting somewhere. Um, these are all kind of journal articles and chapters that I printed off for various things. Most of them were for grad school. Um, you can look a little bit closer and see literary criticism. Um, so that would have been undergrad, but the rest, um, all of the stuff in this one would have been for my thesis. Most of the LGBT stuff. Um, the teaching might have been from undergrad too. Um, but yeah, we've also got our fair share of journal articles up in here as well. So that was a long rambly, not really planned out bookshelf tour. If any of you are interested in any of the things that I pointed out, let me know. Or if you want like a deeper dive into any of these sections, we can do that too. I might do that anyways, just depending on how things go and how bored I get. Um, but in general, that's my book collection. I hope everyone is staying safe um, and home. With a lot of this organizing, I did actually end up unhauling a lot of things, so you'll probably see an unhaul video up as well. But that's all that I have in this video for now, so thank you all for watching. Bye!